Good evening. Thank you for joining me this Saturday on 7 Edition. I'm Otto Othman and these are tonight's headlines. Man gets 10 years jail for insulting Islam on social media. Draft for M40 housing scheme to be ready in May. And Health Ministry looks at using AI to fight dengue. In Pera, a four-month-old baby boy died shortly after being rushed to a hospital from a child care center in Taman Margosa in Banda Sri Botani yesterday. Mior Ikram Adnan said his son, Mohamed Akif Iskandar, was pronounced dead while receiving treatment at the emergency department of the Raja Pramaisuri Bayrun Hospital in Ipoh at about 6.55 p.m. When met at the hospital's forensic department today, the 32-year-old father said he took his son to the hospital after being informed by the caregiver at the nursery that the baby, the youngest of three siblings, was weak and unconscious at about 6 p.m. According to Mir Ikram, a storekeeper in a supermarket, his baby was in good health and only had a runny nose due to cold. The child was sent to the child care center a month ago after his wife, Ismahani Zainal Abidin, aged 30, a bank employee, went back to work after her maternity leave ended. Mulanya dia daripada taska. Lepas tu dah petang baru taska telefon yang cakap anak saya dah dah lembik lah, dah tak larat kan. Kita orang datang pergi ambil dia, tengok dia pun dah memang dah. Memang dah lembik, dah tak, dah tak ada benadi lah. Kita rasa terkilan lah. Kenapa dah anak dah, dah teruk sangat baru dah orang nak bagi tahu nak call. Dah petang kan. Tahu lah nanti akan ada susulan lah, tindakan apa semua. Ipoh Deputy Police Chief Superintendent Mazuki Mat, when contacted, said the post-mortem report showed that the cause of the baby's death was pulmonary edema, a condition caused by excess fluid in the lungs. The case has been classified as sudden death and no arrests have been made. The number of people who sought treatment for inhaling toxic fumes from the chemical waste dumped in Sungai Kim King near Pase Gudang Johor has increased to 79 as of 9.30 p.m. yesterday. According to State Health, Environment and Agriculture Committee Chairman Dr. Sahruddin Jamal, 47 of them were awarded at the Sultan Ismail Hospital while 32 others were given out patient treatment. Dr. Sahruddin said as of 6 p.m. today, the remaining patients of the hospital comprised two children, 15 students and 14 adults, including three medical workers. Six of them are also being treated at the intensive care unit, but their condition was reported to be stable. Dari 47 case yang dirawat di dalam ward hospital Sultan Ismail, 31 case masih berada di dalam ward hospital Sultan Ismail, Dan 16 kes telah didischarge. Speaking to reporters at a Gotong Royong program to fight ADs in Taman Kota Masai today, he added that the Johor Bahru Disaster Committee also held a meeting last night to discuss the incident. Dr. Sarudin, who chaired the meeting, said work to clean the effluents would be carried out soon along the 1.3 kilometer stretch of the affected river. He also said a contractor would be appointed to carry out the work. Police and singer and actress Emily Kong was killed after her car crashed into a tree on Jalan Kuchai Lama, Kuala Lumpur earlier today. The 29-year-old is believed to have lost control of her vehicle, which mounted the curb and crashed into a tree in front of a hypermarket about 3.20 a.m. A spokesperson from the Fire and Rescue Department said they received the distress call around, around 3.29 a.m. A team from the Sapute Fire Station was dispatched to the scene. It is learned that Kong suffered severe injuries to her head. Her body was sent to Hospital Kuala Lumpur for post-mortem. Kong's family members said her funeral service will be held at 10 a.m. on Tuesday at the Full Gospel Assembly Church, Kuchai Lama.
A man was sentenced to more than 10 years jail, while three others were charged over insults against Islam and the Prophet Muhammad on social media. The sentence is believed to be the harshest of such penalty on record in the country, where concerns over racial and religious tensions have grown in recent months. General of Police IGP Tansri Muhammad Fuzi Harun said in a statement today, the person who was, who was not identified had pleaded not guilty, has pleaded guilty to 10 charges of misusing communication networks. The offence carries a maximum penalty of one year in jail or a fine of up to 50,000 ringgit or both, and the sentence was meted out cons consecutively. Another social media user had also pleaded guilty, and the sentencing hearing would be held on Monday while two others had pleaded, pleaded not guilty and were being held without bail. All four were charged under the Penal Code as well as the Communications and Multimedia Act for causing racial disharmony, incitement and misusing communications networks. The top cop also reminded the public to refrain from posting provocative content online as well as abusing social media. In Pahang, four youths have been remanded for a week to facilitate investigations for allegedly taking turns to rape a 16-year-old girl three days ago. The remand order was issued by Temerlo Magistrates Court Assistant Registrar Hayatul Hafifi Hisham today. The incident allegedly took place at a homestay in Taman Saga, Mentakab. Those remanded, aged between 16 and 21, were nabbed early this morning. Initial probe revealed the girl went for an outing with her friend in Temerlo town before the four suspects approached them and pulled her into a car. The girl apparently realized that she was raped when she woke up naked the next day at 6 a.m. with the suspects at the homestay. The case is being investigated under the penal code. The Penang state government reminded, re, remained steadfast in its decision on its project Perumahan Rakyat PPR or Public Housing Scheme to evict tenants who are no longer eligible for the project. Chief Minister Cho Kun Yeo said the tenants were offered low and medium cost houses instead but had turned it down. Today was the fourth day that the six evicted families staged a sit-in at the compounds of the Komta building to protest the decision by the state government. Yesterday, they were granted a three-day respite to return to their houses. However, they continued to spend the night along the Komta walkway. According to Chow, all of them had lost their eligibility for the PPR scheme, including those who claimed that their houses were offered as compensation after their earlier houses were demolished before this. Yeah. Category ini Category. sepatutnya transit saja. Mereka ditawarkan di Sungai Pinang, Sri Saujana dan sebagainya. Mungkin ini pada zaman sebelum kami lah. Tapi mereka tidak follow up dengan Permanent punya uh, re relocation facility. Taman Manggis memang sementara saja. Sementara pun sudah jadi 11 tahun, 12 tahun. Memang ada kelemahan dari segi pengurusan. He added that although having lost their eligibility for the PPR scheme, they can still accept offers in other categories like low and medium cost and also affordable houses. However, housing exco Jagdeep Singh Dio said the tenants refused to accept the offer and had asked the PPR homes on the island and not on the mainland in Seberang Prai. Ada beberapa tawaran telah dibuat tapi mengapa mereka tak terima? I think you balik pada penduduk dan tanya mereka. Seperti mana saya nyatakan kita terbuka kepada rundingan tetapi isu yang timbul di sini adalah layak kelayakan mereka sememangnya telah hilang. Chow and Jagdeep were met at the officiating ceremony of an affordable housing expo in Bukit Murtajam today. Last Wednesday, the CM had explained that the PPR units are only for the hardcore poor, so those whose income is higher consistently failed to pay their rent or those with foreign spouses have to move out. Dengue cases went up by 156 percent, and that's 17,434 cases from January until March this year, compared with 11,146 cases during the same period last year. The number of deaths also had increased to 49 people, compared with 26 deaths in the same period in 2018. 
with the cases continuing to spike nationwide, the health ministry is now resorting to more innovative ways to fight the deadly disease. According to the health minister, Dr. Sri Dr. Zulkifli Ahmad, the soaring numbers are a concern, prompting the ministry to introduce latest approaches to combat the disease, which includes the artificial intelligence AI technology. Upaya an AI itu kita boleh roll out untuk seluruh negara sebenarnya. Kita boleh laksanakan untuk seluruh negara, and we can even map out mana potential outbreak. Ini cara yang agak canggih dan terkini untuk kita gunakan artificial intelligence. Ya sudah sampai waktunya kita menggunakan uh, teknologi ya, itu sebenarnya sebagai the state of art. Ya, kita ada kepakaran sebenarnya di jabat saya sendiri. Ya, kita ada seorang yang memang pakar dalam AI dan uh, prediction seperti ini. He said this after launching the Gotong Royong Mega Perangi Aedes 2019 war on Aedes program in Kuala Lumpur today. Datuk Sri Dr. Zulkifli added, the approach has been tested prior in Penang and had shown a positive result. He said his ministry is also planning to test the technology in several states with a recorded high number of dengue cases before it can be introduced in other states, which will be rolled out in the Klang Valley in the middle of this year. On the use of the Wolbachia infected Aedes mosquitoes to combat dengue in outbreak-prone areas in the Klang Valley, Dato Sri Dr. Zulkifli said the ministry is considering to use the mechanism in other states as well. Meanwhile, Dato Sri Dr. Zulkifli said that his ministry needs to amend the existing law before the proposal to make two vaccinations compulsory for children is implemented. The law on the vaccinations will then be tabled in Parliament. Saya harap akan dapat bermula sebaik saja kita buat keputusan bersama bersekali dengan Kementerian Pendidikan dan juga Kementerian Pembangunan Wanita. Ya ini perkara ini ia sedikit memerlukan sedikit pindaan. Undang-undang untuk menjadikan ia mandatory ya harap paham itu sebab tu kita ambil langkah itu sangat cermat. Ia kalau kita kita ada sidang sidang berparlimen bukan mungkin tidak yang terdekat ini tapi yang seterusnya insyaallah. The health minister had earlier said that his ministry is willing to consider a proposal from the Malaysian Pediatric Association (MPA) for mandatory immunisation for at least two vaccines of the 12 under the national immunisation program. Coming up, Maid's fishy behavior unravels a big secret. Details next. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's hop on to our daily segment, Clickbait, where we take a look at what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. Now there are many reasons why it's good to have a maid to help us around the house so we can have some quality time with our families. However, many find it hard to hire a domestic helper, especially when there's so many horrific maid stories and this one is no exception. Now recently, a netizen known as Nicole Liu shared on social media a video of herself confronting her maid who allegedly tried to smuggle stolen cash. This happened right when the employer was about to send her maid to the airport to return back to her country. On March 6, Nicole posted three videos on Facebook, which garnered over 1 million views and 22,000 shares on Facebook. The videos showed how her maid, who had just finished her term of service, attempted to smuggle a huge amount of cash back to her home country. According to the China press, just before Nicole was about to take her to the airport, she noticed the maid was behaving strangely and decided to take a look at the packet drinks that the maid insisted on bringing along with her. From the videos, it was shown clearly how the maid had stuffed the money into the empty packet drinks before sealing the boxes to avoid detection. The bank notes consist of some foreign currencies, which Nicole suspected were stolen earlier this month during Chinese New Year. It was understood that Nicole and her husband had given their child an ang pao that contained 6,000 Singapore dollars, but it was replaced by another one that contained only 10 ringgit. Nicole and her husband suspected the maid, but they could not take any action without evidence and the maid's confession. After the incident, the maid was then handed to the police for investigation. 
Now, updated as of 7 p.m., here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today. Now it's time for my Game On segment to bring you the latest esports news in Malaysia. With esports gaining popularity among the youths, many universities have taken the initiative to host their own esports tournaments and exhibitions. One of such tournament is Konistra 2019, hosted by University Malaya, which helps motivate and prepare students on how to tackle the competitive esports scene. <laughs> The initiative was fully organized and operated by the university students with guidance and support from Axis Esports. Students get to learn many new skills, including esports tournament management and stage event production. This encouraged them to learn more about Malaysia's growing esports industry and the countless job opportunities it offers. This is a good effort from UM. Uh, what we are trying to do here is to support them, to assist them to, uh, from the grassroots. We are right now, what we are trying to do is for the ecosystem is that we want to uh, scout around the talents that um, they are promising talents that we can run an event uh, by, uh, by a student. Uh. This is an excellent uh, effort because by organizing such, uh, such events, they can do a lot of things. Interaction with the external bodies, internal bodies, organization, facilities management, as bagainya. So we will encourage this very much. While esports may have encountered skepticism in the past, many organizations and universities now see the benefits of esports. Apart from contributing towards the Industrial Revolution 4.0 initiative, eSports also helps the students improve certain skill sets and cognitive abilities. But I think eSport is actually a gym to the mind, where you produce people, students who can think, who can actually react fast, coordinate things, observation and things like that. Over 1,000 people attended the two-day grand finals for Conistra 2019, held at College Kid Diaman Tun Said Zahiruddin in University Malaya, Kuala Lumpur. Backed by Esports Malaysia and Esports Selangor, a total of 700 players competed in six different game titles for a share of the prize pool. Total game yang diadakan adalah enam game kita ada FIFA 19, Tekken 7, Street Fighter, PUBG Mobile, uh, Mobile Legend dan juga Dota 2. Jumlah kesuruhan total prize pool adalah bernilai RM11,000 Malaysia. Now that the steady growth of the esports industry has been recognized globally, more and more reputable organizations are now looking towards improving grassroots development. The University Esports Initiative is also in line with the Youth and Sports Ministry's aspirations of promoting healthy gaming and skills development, as well as making Malaysia the esports hub in the region. In other news, the proposal to establish a caucus in the parliament session on the issue of Palestinians' freedom from the Zionist regime, which will be brought to the cabinet meeting next week. Housing and local government minister Zuraida Kamaruddin said she will table the proposal to enable the issue, especially on the freedom of Palestinian women, to be one of the focal points in the forthcoming parliament session. Uh, saya juga uh, akan menyambut insyaAllah saranan Dr. Fauzia tadi untuk uh, uh, mencadangkan di peringkat kabinet untuk menubuhkan satu kokus untuk pembebasan Palestin memandangkan kita telah uh, membuat uh, meratifikasi uh, Roman Statute yang membolehkan kita untuk perjuangkan keamanan seluruh uh, dunia. She also said it was time that such a caucus is created to ensure that Malaysia is serious in helping Muslims in Gaza, especially for their release. She added non-governmental organizations, NGOs like MyCare, may also be appointed to fight for Palestinian cause. Meanwhile, the draft of the special initiative plan by the Housing and Local Government Ministry to assist the 40% medium income group M40 to own a house is expected to be completed this May.
Zuraida said the ministry is now in the process of studying on how to help the group by providing affordable homes based on income. Jadi M40 itu sebenarnya uh, adalah extension of the B40 punya program yang kita akan extend kepada M40. Cuma M40 ni dia punya pendapatan tu kita ada dua kategori. Satu the lower M40, satu upper M40. So lower M40 is between 3 to 5. Kalau 3000 uh, B40 kan, 3 to 5 dan lepas tu 5 to 10. Eh, 3 to 7 dan 7 to 10. So yang ni kita akan lihat bagaimana kita nak membantu mereka dengan rumah-rumah yang mampu milik uh, berdasarkan pendapatan dan sebagainya. Zoraida added the drafting process was being carried out in collaboration with several relevant agencies. An individual had been exposed by netizens for allegedly impersonating as a specialist at a bogus fertility clinic. What was more shocking was that the clinic has been operating since 2016. PW community in a Facebook posting last Thursday exposed the matter in which it said that the individual had claimed to be an obstetrics and gynecology specialist. Some netizens claimed to know the said individual while others admitted to be victims of the bogus doctor. Based on tip of our news crew went to the clinic in Sri Kembangan Selangor. But the clinic was found to be closed and nearby premise owners said that the clinic has been closed ever since it was exposed to the public. We then met several of people believed to be victims of the bogus clinic including a couple from Klang and Johor who shared their grievances. Itu orang daripada Johor daripada pagi tadi gerak dan sampai sini tengok dah tutup. Call semua tak jawab. Kita pun tak, tak boleh nak cakap apa tapi datang-datang tutup memang kena tipu lah. Uh, tak payah fikir panjang lah. Saya memang dah accept daripada tadi lah. Ini memang kena tipu. Tiga hari lepas saya ada mesej untuk confirmkan appointment. So dah dia kata okey lah. Sembilan hari bulan tiga pukul sepuluh sampai dua belas. Ikut turn dia kata. So hari ni saya datang tak ada pula klinik tutup. Saya pun dah bayar. Dah deposit seribu. Tapi seribu tu bagi saya jumlah tu besar lah. Dah lah berharap kan. The matter was then brought up to Health Minister Datuk Seri Dr. Zulkifli Ahmad and this was his response. Uh, dalam uh, pensiasatan amalan perubatan uh, division uh, bahagian amalan perubatan kami dan uh, andainya kalau kita boleh mengeluarkan beberapa komuniki apa, apa, uh, 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 statement kita akan buat dalam waktu yang terdekat ini. After the break, Thailand to test medical marijuana on patients. Details next. In neighboring Thailand, a local health official said on Friday that the nation is set to start its first test of cannabis oil on patients as excitement swirls around a new industry that could create money-making avenues for entrepreneurs while offering relief for suffering patients. It was reported that the state-sanctioned clinical trials will be held as early as July. The extracts will be administered during the test to volunteers suffering from nausea and pain from chemotherapy, among other ailments. They will come from the government-managed indoor plantation, which houses 140 cannabis plants that are all under proper care and environment since last month. Thailand is the first of in Southeast Asia to embrace medical marijuana after the parliament voted to legalize it for the purpose in December. However, recreational use of its remains illegal. As we wrap up 7th edition, we'll leave you with a trailer of Master Z, the Ip Man legacy, which stars Max Zhang, Malaysian award-winning actress Michelle Yeoh, and American wrestler Dave Bautista. Catch the film in cinemas this April 12th. I'm on 12th month. Thanks for watching and have a good night. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to drink.